Hey, 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 what's up, everyone? Sorry for uh, joining a little late today. Had a little bit of um, issues with my stream yard and audio and video, but hey, a quick reset of the computer, and we're all good to go. So um, today, what I thought would be pretty fun to do um, was make this kind of feedback patch. I'm sure, as you know, using you know the modelers in general, you know we tend to you know play at you know a pretty low volume unless you're you know jamming with your band or you know doing some live stuff. But when it comes to recording and being in your studio and such, it may be hard to get that feedback. And um, you know, one effect that I really um, enjoy was the Digitech Freakout. And that pedal can do all sorts of stuff where, you know, it really makes it sound like you're actually feeding back. And who knows, maybe one day, you know, we'll be able to model that and have that in Helix. Um, we definitely have, uh, you know, the um, you know the power to do so. But I've seen a couple presets out there that try to emulate this, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm sure for... Can't hear me. Can't hear me. Okay, let me see. Let's see. Volume could be louder. All right, all right, all right. I'm sure we'll get that better. So let me just adjust. Thanks, you know, sorry about that. Thank you all for hanging in there with me. Let's try this. Let's give us a boost. Check one, two. Is that better? Let's see. Hold on, let's do, 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 do. Let's do like a 9 dB. Hold on, sorry guys, my... All right, how's that? Is that any better? Better, better? Okay, cool, cool, cool. There's like, there's, there's about a 15 second delay on my end. So let's see if this works here. I'll even crank, check one, two, hey, hey, hey. Testing, sibilance. Came through, but gone again. Okay, all right, all right. Sorry, guys, I usually don't have this much of issue, but let's try this. Let me go into the audio. All right, how's that? Is that better? Much better, okay. so. I cranked up the volume going into the stream, so I'm gonna turn down. Everyone, I'm gonna hit a chord here and let me know, you know, the ratio, the volume ratio between me and my guitar. So there's guitar, here's my vocal. Um, sounds good on YouTube, oh, okay, all right, all right. Well, let me see here, I'll just do a quick little adjustment here. All right, check one, two. Just gonna kind of crank up the decibels here. All right, let's see. Check, check, check. How's that? <laughs> we good? We didn't. We sounding all right? Okay, so I'm gonna roll with it, and um, if anything else pops up, let me know, guys. Just so I don't waste your time. So, um, like I was saying, um, it sounds like uh, you know maybe half of us didn't hear, but I was pretty much going on about. Getting better? All right, all right. Thank you, Mark, for hanging in there with me. Um, I'll give myself a little bit of a boost. I'm unsure why um, the uh, my Yeti mic is so is not playing well with me today. If we go over into audio, yeah, okay, all right. Well, let's try that. All right. So, like I was saying, guys, um, you know, I was thinking about you know, feedback and, you know, us using modelers and such, you know, at lower volumes, we're really not able to get that classic feedback unless, you know, you have maybe a power cab or a powered speaker and you're cranked up really loud, maybe in a rehearsal area or even in a live setting. But when we're at home recording and just jamming and having fun, um, you know, you may, you know, want some of that feedback. And sometimes, you know, I do as well. So, like I was saying, I've always enjoyed the uh, Digitech Freakout, and I was—I feel like I was kind of late to the game when this effect came out. And I was actually told by one of my colleagues, um, you know, here at YGG about it. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of dive in and see how I can kind of recreate that sound, and um, you know, using the poly pitch shifting and a, a dynamic split. 
I was able to kind of get that. Now, granted, the Digitech freakout is written, you know, has some crazy DSP, um, you know, written in there where, you know, it, it really sounds like real natural feedback. And like I was saying, you know, we definitely have um, the wherewithal to, you know, model this effect. But until then, I thought it would be kind of fun to, uh, you know, you know, see what I can make up here. So. I'm sure you know I've seen a couple of revs of this idea in custom tone um, so I kind of did my own but you know some of you out there maybe you've already done this maybe you have some uh, pointers on how I can make this better but um, I'll just kind of show you what I got going on here and so I'm just gonna you know really quick just kind of play and give you kind of like an example of what's up so I'm just going to, when I turn on my foot switch here, you're going to notice that the split dynamic raises. So, you know, and I have, I have the reverse on. So pretty much anything quieter than this decibel rating here, I'm going to cross over into this split and anything louder, um, I'm just going to stay on path A, you know? Um, and so when I, I was thinking, you know, maybe you hit a chord and the volume starts to drop out, then the feedback comes. So leaving it on, I'm just going to play real quick a couple of lines for you and just so you can kind of get a feel of, you know, what, we, what we're working with here. Once you keep it going, you can kind of just have that note sustain. You know, kind of a you know, kind of a crazy little sound there. And you know, I was doing my best to you know, for when that you know, when the decay of the volume from the guitar starts to happen, and then that crossover happens, it's a little abrupt at times. So doing something kind of like. So you can kind of hear that, you know, how it, you know, kind of like a noise gate that's kind of just chopping you up, you know, so you could kind of massage it, you know, and of course my playing style, my guitar, you know, definitely makes a difference. So that's pretty much what I got going on here just to give you an idea. And so let's see how I got this sound. So like I was saying, we start off with a dynamic split and these dynamic splits I haven't used a whole lot really um, you know I've heard bass players tend to use a lot of you know splits and you know maybe if you only want reverb when you're you know just raking into the strings that's when you know you can use that dynamic split but pretty much with the dynamic split here like I was saying earlier especially for those that just joined us you know when you first create a dynamic split um, the reverse uh, parameter is off and so pretty much anything you know uh, louder would go down to the you know path B and anything quieter would stay on path A you know so I reversed that and so anything quieter than you know this decibel rating will go down to path B um, and anything louder will be on path one and so what I did is I brought in a our poly pitch engine and if you're you know interested in using poly pitch and maybe you've run into that situation where it's like well once i use this block i can't use anything else um, i recommend you know definitely using each path if you can um, you know if you're able to uh, you know kind of allocate your block so to speak so i have our poly pitch um, shift engine right here just using the poly capo and i have the interval at um you know a whole octave up but a lot like that freak out pedal from digitech i was talking about you could actually change you know the the interval you know and what feedback of course that effect has you know natural feedback and you could be an octave higher an octave lower um, you know so for me I personally like the octave high you can move this around of course obviously to get any kind of that quote-unquote you know virtual feedback if you will um, and you can move that around for sure. Now I have it set to stable. Um, if you're new to the poly pitch engine, if you're doing big open suspended chords or whatever that may be, or just regular, you know, just regular power chords, you could leave this at stable and even X stable. Um, I feel stable works really well. Otherwise, if you're playing really quick and doing a lot of stuff and you're messing around with the poly pitch engine, I recommend doing fast and X fast for uh, you know much faster playing because this is really the processing, you know, and if you have it set to fast and you're playing really big chords, 
you may hear some, you know, jumping around. So, you know, find what works best for you. But for this tone and what we're working with today, I have it set to stable. Now, after that, I have uh, just a red squeeze, just a compressor. The sensitivity and mix is dimed. And the whole point here, um, you know, was obviously the only way for my guitar, t for our guitar tone to, you know, to pass through this split dynamic here, the volume has to drop. And so to compensate for that loss of volume, you know, I thought, you know, what would be better than a compressor and also to add in that sustain that we get, um, you know, when it comes to using these kind of effects and if you've used that freak out effect it does have um, the ability where you know you can just resonate on one note on one string of the guitar let's say and just move around and so that kind of gives me um, you know that same uh, end result but again you know you can move these things around to your playing style but um, you know so far I've had a lot of fun working with this so another thing that I've seen be, um, be used is actually a legacy uh, pitch effect and being the V-tron. Now what's cool about this effect is how it has these vowel sounds. And so when this filter kicks in, you know, obviously you have the speed. How fast is it going to cycle through these vowel sounds starting from U and ending at A, right? And, um, you know, this kind of gives the tone a little bit of a natural feedback. Um, you know, I have it turned off, but I thought it would be cool just to have there in case, you know, you, you know, once we're done with this today, I'll give you guys the, uh, you know, the, um, the custom tone link and you can download this tone for yourself. But let's hear, you know, really the difference, you know, I'll kind of do the same thing I did before. I'll, I'm, I'm just going to make some noise, right? <laughs> and let's hear without this V-Tron legacy pitch effect, and then we'll hear it with it on. So... Let's just, uh, yeah, let's have some fun. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds really, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of get used to messing with this effect. Now let's hear, now let's hear how it sounds with this V-Tron. You can hear how, since it's kind of, you know, going through these vowel sounds, it, you know, the feedback, you know, or, you know, this effect we're getting kind of sounds a little more natural. You know, something you could really do with a lot of, uh, you know, with a lot of resonance. You know, something like that. If you want to kind of just kind of sustain from note to note. I know, I'm just, you know, nothing too musical today, right guys? All noise. But that kind of shows you how you can kind of bring a naturalness into this effect. Now, what what I'm going in today, let's let's take a quick look. I'm seeing some comments rolling in. Um, that is so awesome. I got to have this patch. Thanks, Ben. Really appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, what I'm going into is, you know, I'm just sending path, you know, to A and B um, or, you know, down to path to A and B. So pretty much instead of sending, you know, I always could have dropped this down. But if we did something like this, then, you know, I'm not going to hit the amp. Right. So I'm just having this guy go right up right at the uh, right at the merge point and then i'm sending this signal down individually to path 2a and to path 2b and so the whole point here is since i'm shifting from one side to the next and then i happen then i'm coming over here i didn't want any kind of 
weirdness not so much phasing but i didn't want it i didn't want the sound of going from a single a single path to a split path because you might you know you might hear a little bit of kind of like a phase or a doubling if that's not what you're going after um in especially i'm not really having any reverb or delay on one of the paths so that color may be there so to negate that i just you know had a, a split on path one and then I have my split down on path two and this area here we see a volume um, a, a volume pedal here uh, really this is just here so I could so I can make the split otherwise I don't need anything down here for what I'm doing here but otherwise you know you see the effects I'm using these are just what you know, I was working with, you know, the day I, you know, put this patch together. You can replace all of this stuff with whatever you want in this tone or this, you know, freak out feedback will still work. Um, you could use anything, um, you know, even if you wanted a, something as clean as a JC, you know, 120 or uh, the jazz chorus, as we call it, um, you, you know, you can get the exact same effect, right? Uh, because as we could see, all this stuff is happening before any gain. It's happening before any amp modeling. So, you know, all of the oomph lives up here on path one. So literally just, you know, take this tone template if you're into it and then just replace what I put down here with what you want and you can make this kind of your thing. So, you know, nothing too crazy, um, but, you know, it, I think it's, it's a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of different reiterations of this out there and I feel you know this gets pretty close um, I don't think anything I can do will be as good as you know that freak out pedal but um, you know maybe you can find some use out of this uh, let's take a quick look at um, the comments and stuff yeah it doesn't look like pretty straightforward right so what I'm gonna do for those of us watching I'm just gonna put a link at the bottom of the screen now this is for you know the custom tone link just you know to get this preset you may know Notice I'm using an impulse response today. I'm actually using the Live Ready Sound Pack off of the Line 6 Marketplace. Now, if you're into, you know, really anything Mesa Boogie, uh, anything vintage, you know, vintage 30s of Celestion, and really anything of John Petrucci, get this LRS um, IR Pack. It's really, really good. And so I'm using this Stefano thing here. So. I have all, everything assigned to a foot switch, so when we look at the bypass and controller assign, we could see that the split dynamic is assigned to foot switch 9, the red squeeze is assigned to foot switch 9, and the poly capo is also assigned to foot switch 9. So when I engage this foot switch, all three of these parameters are turning on and off. Granted. I do not have this uh, vintage or vintage this legacy um, effect assigned to this stuff because I feel like you know sometimes I'm into it sometimes I'm not so you can make the choice on adding that to foot switch 9 or whatever other foot switch you want to do and if this is your first time seeing multiple items um, assigned to a single foot switch you'll notice that we have three items assigned but i just went right over down um you know to customize the name i named it feedback and i love the color pink on the you know when, when i see the leds lit up so that's what i did and so you could just add it yourself rename it whatever you want and you can make it latching or momentary uh, momentary would probably be a pretty you know good idea um, but for me i like to have it on when i want it on and i like to have it off when i want it off because i can play and then at any time, just kick that thing on for feedback, right? You know? Pretty fiery tone. I've been having a lot of fun with um, this Cali 4 lead right here. Um, I was doing some research and seeing, um, God, what was it? Uh, the Change of Seasons album. This is the uh, the um, the amp that John Petrucci started using, and man, the lows on this amp are just killer. Um, I really, really dig this amp model. So yeah, guys. Um, sorry I got started a little late for a um, little late for you today, but as you can see, nothing too crazy, but a pretty cool idea here that um, you know I hope you guys can kind of take away, run with it. Um, 
And so, yeah, definitely good stuff there. Now, before I let you guys off, just want to let you know, um, you know, we are doing uh, Helix lessons. So, if you're a Helix user, if you're into PodGo, um, PowerCab, HX Stomp, HX Stomp XL, whatever it may be, go to line6.com forward slash events, sign up for an event, um, or actually a lesson, you know, and get some one-on-one time with myself, Tony Campanovo, Ross Bailey, you know, and we'll get you going on really any questions you have and, you know, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to learn, right? And guess what? It's free. And so what, what can you get for free nowadays that's this valuable? I'm not too sure. But other than that, guys... Thank you so much for taking the time on checking this out with me. Um, I hope it's useful for you and you could um, have some fun with it. But I'll make sure to put that link in the comments section in case you didn't catch it on the screen. And other than that, be safe, have a great holiday, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. All right, so as I was closing up, I noticed um, we got a question here. Could you please explain again why you split path B if nothing is happening to 2B? And so you're looking at the split here with 2B. So what I was thinking, you know, there's really no, you know, major rhyme or reason here. Um, I was, you know, kind of messing with some other stuff that we don't see here, but I was just thinking with my ears that since I have a split on path on the you know on the first uh, first path here, since I have this split and I'm going from split to split, what happens is I'm getting both split. I'm kind of having an even split at the same time here, and so I just thought maybe you know it would just have a clear sound you know having a split on path two. But honestly, we could probably take this away, and the tone probably wouldn't change that much. Um, you know, but that was just me just kind of throwing stuff together. There's really, you know, there's really not a huge reason on why this was split, but, um, yeah, just so, just so I don't, you know, Gad, just so I don't leave you hanging there. I just want to let you know, there's real, you know, no real rhyme or reason, but you know, download the tone and uh, move some stuff around yourself and, you know, see, see if you hear a tone difference at all. Um, but other than that, you should be fine if you removed it, but, um, Great, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry to chime back in there for you, but just wanted to clear that up. Thanks again, and have a great time, guys.